After generating countless box office hits and coming off the heels of his controversial cinematic masterpiece Malcolm X, Spike Lee wanted to do something a bit more toned down. Quickly was brought to life by he and his siblings, Sinke and Joa Lee, who co-wrote the script. Quicklin is an American drama slash comedy loosely based on the lives of Lee and his siblings growing up in 1970s Brooklyn. The movie is about a jazz musician, his teacher wife, and the five kids that they're raising all while dealing with the burdens of bills, social and racial issues, and marital woes. In this video, we're going to be discussing a few interesting facts about Quicklin. Let's get into it. Number one. As mentioned before, the movie Quicklin was loosely based on life in the Lee household growing up. Much like the movie, Lee's mother was a school teacher, his father a jazz musician, and he was one of five children. There are also a few scenes in the movie that actually mirrored real life situations. Just to name a few, there was one particular scene in the movie where Clint decided to go to the Knicks game instead of his father's concert that actually happened in real life. There was also another scene with the Black Eyed Peas where Carolyn was trying to force Nate to eat all of his Black Eyed Peas despite the fact that he does not like Black Eyed Peas and refused to eat them. I think we can all relate to that scene, well some of us at least. I know for me, when I was growing up, I did not like Black Eyed Peas. I still don't like Black Eyed Peas, so I can definitely, definitely relate to Nate in that scene. Eat the peas. Number two. The script of Quicklin was originally written as a TV pilot aired on Nickelodeon. It was screened for inner city kids that didn't like it, saying that it wasn't enough rap music, only jazz. From there it was turned into a screenplay, which I am extremely grateful for because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have a favorite movie. I ain't no puta. I ain't no puta. I'm cunning. I keep smart and clean. Number three. Quicklin was the first on-screen debut for actor Bokeem Woodbine. Bokeem to me is someone who is extremely underrated. Not only is he a talented actor, he's been in some of my most favorite movies to this day, but if you're like me, you've probably always felt like he just does not get the recognition that he deserves for whatever reason. Number four. So there's a particular scene in the movie that has always had me scratching my head. It's always made me wonder what is going on. But there is a scene where the family is going south so they can visit on Song, which is where Troy will be spending the summer. And it's like as soon as they step into on Song's house, the entire screen just changes. It's like the the picture on the movie is squeezed, is disoriented, it just looks out of shape and weird. And I just always wondered what was the point? I never knew. I always actually just thought it was a glitch in the film or the crew just got something wrong. But after doing research, I found out that this was actually done on purpose by Spike Lee and his crew to emphasize the fact that Troy felt so uncomfortable in this new space. You know, although on song is family, she's not used to being around them. She's not used to being in the South. She's from Brooklyn. She's used to being with her brothers, you know. She's used to the life that she lives in Brooklyn. I wanna go home. Right, I'm going home. Number five. Spike Lee had to teach the child actors to play the street games that they were playing in the opening credits. In an interview, he was pointed to have said, those games have died. They have died because the kids in comparable neighborhoods today are afraid to go outside and play in the streets. That was in the 90s. I wonder how he feels today. Number six. Much like their on-screen roles, Zelda Harris and Taisha Reyes, who played childhood best friends Troy and Minnie, are still friends to this day. Both of them have been seen in the recent past posting pictures together on Instagram. 
It just really warms my heart to see that those two are still keeping in touch. Number seven. In the scene where Troy goes to the store, you can see her holding a bag of chips as she asks the cashier to also give her lemon heads, bazooka gum, licorice, fireballs, and Boston baked beans. Give me two licorice sticks, 10 bazookas, some lemon heads, some fireballs, and some Boston baked beans. So when Troy gets back from the store, her brothers see all of the candy that she just bought and they insist that she gives them some. Of course she refuses and they end up taking away all of the candy, but after that, Troy is eating a candy necklace. And Troy didn't even buy a candy necklace. <laughs> Number eight. Now this one is pretty fascinating to me because I just did the video about Eve's Bayou and the interesting facts about that movie. Now one of the interesting facts in that movie was the fact that Casey Lemons, who wrote Eve's Bayou, was married to Vondi Curtis Hall, the actor who played Julian in the movie Eve's Bayou. And interestingly enough, he also plays Uncle Brown in Crooklyn. Not only that, his wife on screen, Aunt Maxine, is played by Joa Lee, who is the writer of Crooklyn. Number nine, Crooklyn was actually Delroy Lindo's first time ever working with kids on screen. By 1994, Lindo had already played in 17 movies. So I can only imagine how difficult it was for him to adapt to playing a role of a father. Luckily for Delroy Lindo, he's a brilliant, gifted actor. That's very cute. You remember to write it down before it bounced the next time. All right. For our last and final fact, we have one of my favorite scenes from the movie, and probably an all-time fan favorite from Crooklyn, if I'd ask anybody who's ever seen this film. The Queenie scene. Now, I just wanted to touch base on this scene just because I'm pretty sure most of us know if this scene was real or not, but I always did want to know if they really had a dog flying out of this pull-out couch. Of course, they did not harm any real animals in the making of this film. It was all fake and for laughs, and they did exactly what they came to do with that because this scene will go down in history. Looks like it's going to rain. That means that my baby is in heaven. <laughs> I just wanted to end this video by saying how much I truly appreciate the movie Crooklyn. Not only did it make me laugh, but it made me think, it made me cry. It made me feel like I had something to relate to growing up black in America. This movie does not get the recognition it deserves in my eyes, so I just wanted to do something to show how grateful I am that Spike Lee blessed us with a movie as good as Crooklyn. Did you enjoy my fun facts? If so, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also hit that bell to be notified about future uploads. Leave a comment, let me know if you learned something new or if you already knew all this. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Till next time, bye-bye.